Hey, and welcome back to Trady Business School, the podcast where we have real conversations and share insights and tips on how you can run your trades or contracting business more easily, enjoyably, and profitably. I'm going to be having a chat with the amazing Brian Santos. I'll introduce you in a moment uh, about the three common online marketing mistakes you don't want to make. How are you today, Brian? It's so great to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, so good to be here today. Yeah, I was uh, really excited to be recording this episode with you. We have many great conversations with our clients. And this is one of the topics that I think it's very, very simple. Yet to get a few of these things right, they're free, they're simple, very easy to do. And they can make quite a big difference in your business. And yet we notice, don't we, Brian, so many business owners don't do these things. Oh, absolutely. And and I mean, you'll be surprised how easy it is, the stuff that we'll talk about today. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. So online marketing is one of those uh, things. It's really about your digital presence. So these, these terms, as you're listening to this today, wherever you're tuning in from, be it uh, listening in your car as you're driving from job to job, or, or maybe you're out going for a walk with he- headphones in your ears, these things are all things that you should be doing and you should be doing them today not next month next year it's not one of those things that you put them on your list and deal with them later because maybe they don't seem that high a priority right now because as you'll discover as Brian and I unpack them they are more important than probably you've given thought to So online marketing, your digital presence is one of the most important things that you can pay attention to now. When you think about it, Brian, I'll ask you this. If I said to you, I um, recommend this plumber to you because let's just pretend you've asked me, you know, you need a plumber. If I said, hey, you know, here, Brian, here's a name of a plumber. What's one of the first things you're going to do? I'll be Googling them. Yeah, Googling. Googling being a verb now, of course, or searching on the internet, right? (laughs) is, yeah, we go and Google them. We go and look them up online and we look them up online to do what? To check them out. I I want to know who they are and uh, are they legit? I want to know, you know, what they look like. If I can find out what they look like, I want to see if they've got reviews. I just want to check them out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, before we continue, I should probably introduce everyone. Brian Santos is one of our coaches, one of our coaches in our opulence program and Trady Accelerator. He brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to our clients. So uh, really thrilled to have him on the episode. So absolutely, they Google them. Um, and you Google, I would do the same. I'd go, I'd go and Google and I'd probably go and look up more than one option. And what I would be doing is comparing, do I want to use this business or this business? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And and the other thing, uh, that our online presence is very, very important. And the other, the other thing to consider as well is this is not just about marketing your business. It's about marketing, sorry, marketing your business for clients. It's about marketing your business for staff. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, the, the common thing that we keep hearing day after day, week after week is I can't find good staff or I can't find or I, my staff keep getting poached and all the rest. And then if you spend literally one minute looking uh, them up online, there's not much to see online. There's not much kind of backing online. So yeah, absolutely. It's not just about your presence for potential clients, but yeah, for potential employees as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's, if you see a job ad out there and as a candidate going, I might consider leaving my job because let's face it right now, there's not a bunch of trades uh, floating around out there uh, unemployed at the moment or without work. They can pick and choose. That's the way it's a lay of the land at the moment and will be for considerable time is that if they're considering moving from where they are now to possibly working for you, they're going to look you up. That's the way it's going to be. So those of you that can't find good staff and are worried about hiring, having trouble with hiring and don't think that your online presence matters, well, I'll just say it. You're wrong. There you go. Might ruffle some feathers out there, but you're wrong. It matters. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're laughing at me. So let's jump in because I know this stuff matters. The first the first uh, thing we're going to talk about today, first common mistake is not using your domain in your email. Talk to us a little bit about what this is, Brian. So look, most of us have our own website. So, you know, 
plumbing, you know, abcplumbing.com.au, but yet we still use our plumbing abc proprietary limited at gmail.com or at hotmail.com. And I know it's something that you've used all the time and it's just easier because it's linked to your phone It's and all the rest. And yet you have all your messages and contacts listed, to, um, you know, under that email address. But it's so common that, yeah, it's just that that's, the, that's one major thing that is so simple that if you can just change today, it'll make a hell of a difference. Yeah, so 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 I so agree. And is hotmail even a thing? Goodness, I remember you know. In fact, I'm not going to even go there because I'll just show my age at how old hot I think hotmail is. However, so your domain name for those of you out there, what are you talking about? Mentioning a domain. So your domain name is the such and such. So you know www.abcplumbing dot com dot au. The abcplumbing.com.au is your domain. It's that thing you pay for for your website. So those of you that might do ABC plumbing at gmail.com, at hotmail.com, at outlook dot whatever it is, you're not using your domain name. What you want is your domain to be the thing after the at. So it might be Brian at abcplumbing.com.au or inquiries at abcplumbing.com.au, those sorts of things. So one of the reasons I think many people use the use it the um, the way with the Gmail or the Hotmail.com is because it's free, mm. right? And what message are you sending out there in terms of when you think about it? If you're using a free non-domain named email address, when someone calls you and asks for a quote, and you send it from you know uh, so and so at ABC Plumbing at Gmail.com, what message are you sending to that prospect? Yeah, this is this is something that's a bugbear of mine because while it might not seem like a big deal, uh, and you might say, yeah, but I've been using this for years and I've been quoting and sending, you know, all sorts to clients and prospects over many years. But I'm telling you, what it does, it creates a perception, and perception is big, right? In fact, a common saying is perception is reality. And so, if your perception is that you're using a a free email address then perhaps you're attracting or you're potentially attracting cheaper or, or uh, you know, clients who want a cheaper alternative. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want a more, more profitable, high-quality clients, then this is one of the things I would be doing. I, I know a point where if I had two businesses in front of me, uh, it would take – it is one of the deciders. It might seem very, very small. There are, there are clients out there that would use that as a decider in terms of professionalism. So so get that out there. Now, it's very easy to go and do this. Now, uh, I know that you can go and do this via Google, via Google Workspace. You can sign up. And so, therefore, it still is and operates like a Gmail account. Now, I'm not a Google specialist. I'm just going to put that disclaimer out there. However, you can definitely, and many, many businesses do that. So go and have a look at Google for Business and Google Workspace, and they can set that up. So it operates on your phone and through the usual um, usual ways of using Gmail, except for it would use your domain name uh, as an address. And you can have a number of different ones. Or go to your website hosting provider. So the person you pay for for um, your website domain, uh, your host, and they will be able to help you. Often you get email addresses through them. Personally, I found them a little bit more difficult to use, the, uh, those ones. However, just, yeah, there, there are many different ways that you can get it done through your web provider. So go and get that done. I say that's a must to get addressed really quickly. Yeah. Um, so the second thing kind of comes off the back of the, the emails. And the second thing we've noticed is very easy to go and do, and once again, free, we like is not registering for Google My Business and setting up a business profile. Oh, that's so easy. And again, if if you're computer illiterate, it's okay. This is like if you know how to use a Word document or if you know how to check emails, you can do this as well. So Google My Business or GMB, GMB which you might find you know, referenced in, in different places. It's free. And if you notice, so if you had a uh, your business name or if you Google a business name, sometimes on the right-hand side of the, of the Google page, the Google search page, you will find that business, their business name, their business details. And in some cases, you'll have reviews and stars and all the rest, sometimes some photos and, 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 and that sort of thing and links to their 
to their address on the map and uh, that's free. That's free. <laughs> yeah, people don't pay for that. I know you see them all listed up and would you like to find similar businesses in the area or and all the little red dots pop up on the map and a whole list of businesses with stars. So it's it's free organic marketing for anyone looking for a plumber in the area or an electrician or whatever it may be. And so you get on this, you go onto Google, look up Google My Business, you set up a Google My Business account, then you put the information into your business profile, and then you get uh, your profile listed when people search. They all show up as local results when people search for uh, your product or service in that area. So really what you're doing is optimizing your business on Google, as presence on Google, for free. And yeah. Yeah, but there is zero excuse not to be on there. So do that one as well today. Absolutely recommend doing that. So the other one is uh, the third one we're going to have a chat about today is not having an up-to-date website. Oh, my goodness. How many old, moldy websites have you seen, Brian? Oh, it makes me – this is another one that makes me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't cost much. I mean, you can get really fancy websites and uh, there's a there's a thing that – it's called SEO or search engine optimization. And, and a lot of people make their websites search engine optimized so that people, when they search for certain uh, keywords that are specific to what you're trying to attract in terms of the clients and jobs. Yeah, but it, you can, you know, there's different scales of complexity and expensive types of websites. But you, if you if you don't have it up to date and if you don't have it, you know, geared towards something that's relevant to I guess your point of difference. I think you're missing out on a lot. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, and also a Facebook page is not a website either. So I, I have, have a business page. Absolutely, I'm not questioning that. If you want to have a business page, or we'll get yourself on uh, socials. However, a business, a Facebook page is not a website. Uh, no. and, and you don't own the data on that either. So Facebook could take it away and shut you down in a heartbeat. So get a website using your domain mm -hmm. that matches your email and ensure it's up to date. So we, one of the key things that you should always make sure is that your privacy policy and your copyright and the date on the bottom in the footer of your website is always current. That shows people that your website is currently active that your business is active, and small things like that will tell people that you've got an eye for detail, you care, and you're current, and you're all of those things. So, so well, if they can make sure that it says copyright 2022 on the bottom of their website, and it doesn't say copyright 2017, but I will click away from a website that says copyright 2017 because it tells me that no one's paid attention to that website in a really long time. So if, it's like how you do the little things is how you do the big things. So if that's not on your radar, then what else is not on your radar, right? Absolutely, yeah. And again, this also comes back to, you know, not just attracting the right type of clients, but attracting the right type of, of team members. Totally. Staff will look at that. And if it looks like things are old-fashioned and, you know, using things like genuine real images on there rather than, you know, stock photos, you're better to have a slightly lower quality genuine image up there than you are to go and use some, stock image of somebody smiling that, that's clearly not clearly not uh your audience i I've, I've watched it so many times with um gyms not that any of you trades out there are running fitness centers however i think you can apply the same concept as you know you look at the the sculpted bodies and the and and, and this and all the smiles so none of those people are the clients of the gym i would much rather see the real people yeah. and the real results and those things and actually what it's like, to, the feeling like to go to those places. So one of the other things I notice a lot on websites as well is where businesses make it all about their logo and it's really hard to find a phone number and contact details on a website. So if your website does not have your phone number above the fold, meaning when at the top of the page, when you first hit the website page, it needs to be on, you don't You don't have to scroll to find a phone number, put it on the top right, put it on the top left at the top of your website. So the first thing they can do is like, hey, this looks pretty good and I can phone you really easily. Bugbear of mine, if I've got to go diving down into little into the footer to hit a contact, a contact thing to then go through to another page to then try and find a phone number. It's, don't make it hard for them to call you. Just yeah. don't. Yeah. 
So we did have a bit of a bonus we were going to talk about. I know the headline of the uh, of this podcast episode says three, but we do have a bonus for those of you still playing along. We've got a bonus. Uh, what is it, Brian? It's around niching, uh, just the, the marketing strategy on niching, because I know a lot of you out there as trades business owners tend to do, uh, well, you specialize in your type of trade, but niching is taking it a lot further or taking it, you know, taking it deeper, really. Mm. It's uh, so you're not being everything to everyone. You're exactly. narrowing down. Uh, you're narrowing down the type of client that you take on and the type of work. So we can go uh, plumbing. You could go residential or commercial plumbing, or residential or commercial electrical or building. You could take it like that, or you could go even narrower. For example, actually, you had a great example you were talking about earlier, Brian. Do you want to share that one? Yeah. So, so one of our clients has. Um, was a plumber or is a plumber. And so when they were advertising, they were advertising generically, like plumbers in the area, look at you looking for a plumber in the area. They've since done their uh, kitchen, bathroom, laundry renovation license, and they've been focusing now on just promoting bathroom renovations. So they've done Facebook ads and they've, I think they're changing their websites, but their conversation with prospects and clients is totally different. So they're just talking bathroom renovations. Yes, they can do all the plumbing bits and pieces that that he could have done before, but he's now getting larger quotes. I'm talking sixty plus grand type quotes compared to you know small you know re- repair and maintenance type of things. And just by focusing now on the problem or what people are actually looking for, in this case, it's bathroom renovations. He's now attracting a lot more t- of the good type of clients, bigger quotes. And, you know, there's there's still plumbing work that comes from that as well. So, you know, that's it's such a, I shouldn't say simple, but I guess it is a uh, thing to do. But if you can just niche on a particular area or a particular problem that people actually want, as opposed to what you think that they want, that's another key thing. And you can start gearing your website and and some of those other things that we've been, just been talking about online to to gear your online presence to that specific message or that specific niche. Mm. And what's it done to his profits? Huge. So he's actually gone from, I don't know the exact profits, but I know his revenues have exceeded where he's, where he's come from and his margins, his actual margins on his jobs are massive. They're massive. And a uh, couple more jobs and he'll be booked out uh, for the rest of the year. It's it's such a, a valuable lesson, and and we hear it a lot. Is but if I've got to say yes to all the work, because what if what if there's no jobs tomorrow or it dries up? Yet the paradox is that when you start saying no to the clients that are less profitable, less desirable, the ones that are not the clients that you you want to work in, and you niche down, you narrow down those that you say yes to, you become clearer, and and more of them will show up because your marketing gets clearer, your conversations get clearer, and your referrals become more clear. Also, you will start attracting different employees to work for you because they're really clear on the sort of work they're doing. So they're going to want to do that sort of work rather than the sort of work they don't want to do. It's like, okay, well, great. You're not going to have to go spend, you know, days and days crawling under floors or up on the roof doing these light will fit outs. We're we're only going to do this particular type of work. So start thinking about all the different benefits that we'll have in your business. Really, really valuable. One of the biggest things, though, is the mindset and getting over the fear of, of saying no. So building the relationship with saying no to some of the work and, and work work through that fear, getting very, very clear on, on a niche. Now, always the thing to consider, I'll, I'll finish up on, was with niching and, and, and choosing a niche, there always has to be you know, a market is, is there always have to be a buyer and a seller. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't go and niche down in, I don't know, plumbing for spaceships. Okay. Random thing that came to my mind for plumbing for spaceships, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's probably not a big, not a lot of buyers for specific plumbing for spaceships out there. You get what I mean? There's got to be a buyer and a seller. So if you know that there are people out there that have the problem that you want to niche into, do they have the problem? Do they know they have the problem? Are they prepared to pay money to solve that problem? Then you can go there. Absolutely. That's a niche. And often the market is leaving you clues in, in terms of, you know, if you come up with a niche that is 
so unique or it's different and the market hasn't mentioned it before or if it's a product or service that you know or you haven't heard, seen too much out there of, yeah, you could be fighting a, a losing battle. But if you know, like let's say bathroom renovations, for example, you know there's a niche there. You know that there's there's need and there's buyers for bathroom renovations. And then you can start to look online for what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is saying, what people are searching, and then you can build a niche around that. And if you can build a niche around the right demand and the right type of clients there, and you have your online presence or the Google My Business that we talked about and then your website and, and all the rest, then it becomes congruent. And that message, that niche, when people look at you online, you can, you know, people will know what you represent and that people know will know that you are what they're actually looking for. Yeah, so true. Such a valuable conversation. So to wrap it all up, we talked through three common online marketing mistakes plus a bonus four. We talked about not using your own domain name, not using your domain name in your email, sorry. We talked about Google My Business and we talked about uh, having a website up to date and we talked a little bit about strategy. So all very easy, simple things that you can go away and take care of immediately. Why do it? Why do it? Well, you may not need new business today. However, uh, you will need new business at some stage in the future. And what it will enable you to do is to become clearer on now for those of you that have time issues and problems that say who to say no to, how to attract the right type of client so you do more of the work you want and less of the work that you don't want to do. And it will help you with your staffing and hiring. Uh, issues. So I reckon they're pretty compelling reasons to do these things. What do you reckon, Brian? Do you have any parting comments, Brian? And, and the only thing that I um, can say, just to wrap it up, I mean, I agree 100% with everything that you've said, but these are easy things. These things you can do today. And in fact, I challenge you to kind of to to actually start doing those things, the Google My Business, the changing of email addresses, at least because they cost in, in Google My Business cost you nothing, but even just the setup of your email, I think it can be like ten bucks a month. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Today, you literally can do that today. Oh, and 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 before you you come up with a bit, oh, I've got it on all my cards and I've got it out there. That's totally solvable. And and to all your clients, you just send them out an email going from this date forward. This is my new email address, and just get it done. Rip that band aid and get it done because it will pay dividends for the future. I don't think uh, the excuses ever outweigh the benefits for doing this. So there we go. So for those of you that have loved this episode, uh, share it, like it, love it, wherever you see it. Pop some comments in if there's comments bits below on whatever medium you're watching it on. Uh, if you haven't yet joined our free Facebook group, Tradies and General Contractors Global, where uh, we do free trainings, there's resources in there, jump on in there. It's a free group, jump on in there. Um, and as always, you know, Brian and I are on socials. You're more than welcome to connect with us there. So thank you so much for joining. And Brian, thank you for joining me on this episode. I know we've got a few more up our sleeves, so you can all expect to hear from Brian again in the future. Very excited. Thank you for being here, Brian. Thanks, Miranda. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. 